Hi everyone, my name is Joseph, and today I want to have a discussion about Valve's Half-Life. So not Half-Life Source, but just the regular Half-Life, which came out November 19th, 1998. And of course, it released via Steam, so it's a PC game. Um, so really quickly, my history with Half-Life. I did start Half-Life with the orange box, so Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Um, my gaming on PC has been relatively new. I probably I did have a gaming PC for most of my uh, adult life, but it was not really a gaming PC per se. It was more like my work slash school computer that just so happened to play uh, games here and there. And its f first focus was never uh, to utilize as a gaming uh, machine. Um, once I finished with college and I got a little bit more engaged with um, the world of PC and everything like that, I would say that my computer is definitely a gaming PC specifically and a uh, work computer second, far from uh, being second. I do have a laptop specifically for work. Um, so yeah, so I started engaging with more purchases for Steam. And I did purchase the orange box for the Steam uh, version. Uh, and I did play that. I haven't done a review for that just because I've done a, uh, have I done a review for Half-Life 2? I suppose I haven't, but I've beat it so many times, about three or four times. Uh, that's the only reason why I haven't done a review for it. But I will eventually. I'm also currently going through episode two on the PC as well. so. Um, that's another reason why I haven't done so if I do do the review when I do do it not if I want to do it all at once Half-Life 2 and its episodes So what's the point about talking about this? My point is just to discuss and highlight that I've never played the first Half-Life up until uh, Late last year or this year when I first purchased the game and I have to say uh, I was a little bit apprehensive about checking it out just because I know the older the further one goes back with PC gaming more of a bit of a hassle it is to make the game run on a modern device. Uh, thankfully though with Half-Life 1, it really wasn't too much of an issue. Uh, I didn't get the source version because I did do my research and according to the community, uh, the source version just has some minor hiccups here and there that just makes it not as seamless. Uh, oh, seamless, excuse me, seamless. <laughs> not as seamless as the regular Half-Life release. Um, uh, in case one didn't know, the source version utilizes some more of the physics uh, that Half-Life 2 uses. While this Half-Life 1 is based on its original engine. Uh, don't quote me on that. That's just to my light understanding of the uh, Half-Life 1 versus Half-Life 1 source. I also do have Black Mesa. Well, Black Mesa is a remake. Or a, uh, maybe not a remake, but because uh, I am aware it's not one for one. Um, they've streamlined some of the missions to make it more quote-unquote efficient. Getting rid of the more uh, filler parts. So again, it's not one for one, but I do have that. Uh, but I would argue that these are its own video and I haven't finished it anyways. I haven't even started it yet. Uh, I am currently playing Half-Life Opposing fo Forces. I say Opposing Foes. <laughs> opposing Forces. And again, the only reason why uh, I'm making the choice to do a review for Half-Life 1 versus Half-Life 2 and not making videos for the individual iterations is because I've beaten Half-Life 2 my, at least twice already. And this is my first time beating Half-Life 1. I have to say a lot of the elements that makes Half-Life 2 so memorable, you could, definitely, you could definitely see the skeleton of that within Half-Life 1. The movement is not as smooth, uh, but it's still quite uh, buttery for the time that it's coming from, 1998. Uh, the, the graphics, of course, is not as, um, as, a, as appealing, uh, but it's not horrible as well. I wouldn't compare it to like PS1 graphics or even PS2 graphics. It's still service, quite sir, more than serviceable. They do their job well, in my opinion. Uh, though there's not too many uh, NPCs. There's only, I believe, three essentially. Uh, two scientists and one uh, security guard. Uh, uh, it doesn't really ruin immersion. Again, one needs to keep in mind the context of the video game. So I think, in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense. The music, though, the music I think is still quite great. I have to look into this if it's the same composer. But just something about Valve and their soundtracks, they always do such a smashing job about it. Uh, except, uh, besides for Half Life and Half Life 2, I, I do enjoy the music in Porto. Porto 2 and Team Fortress 2. So I don't know how Bob does it with the soundtrack, but they're always hitting it out of the park. Uh, the story for Half Life 1 is told the same way as, as Half Life 2. There's a lack of cutscenes. Everything's just told to the first person perspective of our moon, our man, Gordon Freeman. Uh, <laughs> I just say that as a joke because I do really appreciate Gordon Freeman as a character. I think it's awesome that he was just a regular Joe Blow and, and he ends up having to take the mantle of the crowbar and uh, he, he, he gets everything done, he gets everything accomplished. Definitely uh, highly regarded, at least for me. He's up there with Geralt of Rivia, the Master Chief, the Guardian from Destiny, and a lot of other great characters that I really do enjoy and appreciate. Anywho, but it's told from the first person perspective of Gordon Freeman. Just like with Half-Life 2, if one uh, looks around, you're going to see the G-Man 
here and there. We also get to see the sequence of events where we utilize the uh, the test subject that activates the uh, portal uh, that leads into the whole catastrophe, the Black Mesa. Um, uh, I was going to say experience. It is an experience, definitely, but the Black Mesa um, situation. There we go. And um, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie between Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2. I do think the puzzles for Half-Life 1 is a bit more clunkier. It's not as smooth. And I think, again, that makes a lot of sense. As I said, you see the skeleton for Half-Life 2 present in Half-Life 1. There were a couple of times in Half-Life 1 where I did need to look up a quick uh, guide uh, to see where I got through. And that was only because I was kind of like, whoa, that's what I need to do. A good example about this would be from Zen. Uh, so after you do the first part where you go uh, into like a cave, um, it, there's this little portion that launches you up into the air. And at first, I thought I needed to go back into the air, the surface, to take care of all the enemies. The new wave of enemies come out. And I thought after that, a door or something would appear. <coughs> Excuse me. I was incorrect about that, so I ended up dying. And uh, doing that whole sequence of events again. And when I got launched into the air, the first time I didn't go very high for some reason. Maybe it was just bad luck. But the second time, I was <laughs> I was really launched into the air. I was like, whoa, is, is this a glitch? Is this meant to make me go this high? When I went this high, that high the second time... I did notice there were platforms around me. I also noticed one specific platform with like some kind of portal or something like that. And I thought to myself, oh, is that where I'm supposed to go? At that point, I was kind of tired a little bit. So I decided to take a break and stop playing. And I didn't want to waste my time. I wanted to be efficient. So I did make the choice to look it up online for Zen. And indeed, that it was where I was supposed to go. To be frank with everyone, had I not looked it up, I probably would have um, tried to clear out the enemies first and then walked around and realized what's going on. Oh, I'm supposed to go up there. Dang, now I get so. <laughs> I am glad I looked up the walkthrough. So, although I did have to look up a walkthrough a couple of times, it was not during gameplay. It was just because I was getting impatient, to be frank with everyone. Impatient just because I felt like the way forward wasn't as clear or obvious. And I just didn't want to, quote unquote, waste my time walking around. Just because I was so close near the end and I was excited to finish the game. And also, I am going to be transparent. I did start utilizing cheats during the Zen level, more specifically during the final boss fight. The reason why I did so is just, again, I was getting impatient. I was very much low on ammo. And was I low on... No, I wasn't low on health, but I was just low on ammo. I did not have a lot of ammo whatsoever. And the last boss fight, I had an inkling it wasn't going to be just a boss fight. It was going to be like a puzzle of sorts, kind of like with Portal 1 and GLaDOS. And sure enough, it, it was like that. Um, it wasn't too difficult to figure out, and I had to look up a video for that. Um, but again, I didn't need to use cheats just because I was getting impatient. I was running out of ammo. Uh, but once you know what to do for the final boss fight, it really is quite uh, smooth. I don't want to say um, easy because I feel like that sounds negative. But easy in terms of the mechanics are not hard to grasp. They're not difficult to uh, keep in mind while running around or uh, uh, taking cover in the arena when you're following the Ninolith. I probably didn't pronounce that correctly. <clears throat> but yeah, and I also do enjoy how the uh, technically there's two endings for this game. The first ending is uh, uh, rejecting the G-Man's uh, offer to join him and his... Uh, employers and the second uh, true ending canonical ending is obviously making the choice to work with the G-Man and being put into stasis and waiting for the start of Half-Life 2. So as someone who's uh, never played Half-Life 1, uh, actually I shouldn't say that I did play bits and pieces here and there because my dad had the game. Uh, he, he's, he would pirate games and so he didn't own the game but uh, he did have the game and uh, I never I just recall have memories of walk, walking around uh, with the crowbar and um, in the first level, but that's basically it. I never went beyond that because uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit uh, well scared. <laughs> I would argue Half Life is not a uh, a uh, sunshine, uh, rainbows kind of game. It is a little bit um, dark for its atmosphere, and that's why we all love it, right? That's what makes Half Life so great. Uh, anyways, but this is my first time engaging with Half Life in such a way that it was for its gameplay, in such a way that I wanted to complete it, and what a, a joy that it was. I'm enjoying so far opposing forces. forces. I've only beat the first level so far, um, but it's just more Half-Life goodness, so how can I not be enjoying that, right? Once I'm done with the Poising Forces and um, the old one, Blue Shift, I believe it's called, or Blue Something, I'm going to go ahead and play Black Mesa. I'm looking forward to doing a comparison, contrasting of, of a Half-Life one versus Black Mesa. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it. Um, I guess the question, uh, I don't really do this as often, but the question I have for everyone, if you have played Half-Life, Please let me know which one's your favorite iteration of it. I suppose in this at this point we have Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, uh, ha excuse me, Half-Life 1, Opposing Forces, uh, Blue Shift, or whatever that it's called, Half-Life 2, Episode 1, Episode 2, and uh, uh, Half-Life Alex. I wonder if we should be including Black Mesa into that. I am aware that Valve didn't work with Black Mesa, but at the end they did 
officially endorsed Black Mesa. So maybe we'll just call it 6.5. Uh, with with Black Mesa, so there are a number of of uh, Half Life games at this point. Which one's your favorite? Uh, I haven't played Half Life Alex quite yet, unfortunately. I do want to play it one day, but I don't can't justify owning a VR system just for one game. Uh, I don't even have a VR system for my PlayStation, and I do want one. And so, who knows what I'll be doing about that? Uh, I did try downloading it and getting a mod to play it without VR, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working. Uh, so I made the choice to refund the game. But maybe I'll try that again in the future. And this time, really stick with it and really see if I could get it working. Uh, when I did that, I was still fairly new when it comes to PC gaming and messing with files and stuff like that. But yeah, so again, to reiterate, what's your favorite Half-Life? Uh, for me, it, as cheesy as it sounds, it's probably definitely going to have to be Half-Life 2. Um... I would, I would just to make the, the make that question easier to answer. I would separate Half Life Two from its episodes, and I would just combine Episode One, and Episode Two into one iteration. Uh, and the reason why I stopped and paused is because there are some a lot of great set pieces actually from the episodes that really make me think about Half. When I think about Half Life Two, uh, I think of uh, set pieces from the base game, but also set pieces from Episode One and Episode Two, such as for example the Vortigaunt saving Alex in Episode One. Uh, or in episode two, uh, the whole uh, oh, it had the name in my tip of my tongue, but now I forgot it. White White Base, White Forest, the whole sequence of events, uh, getting to White Forest with the bridge and seeing the enemy forces move out, and also the actual uh, battle at White Forest. So, again, yeah, when I think of specific moments, my my brain goes to the big the base game and to the DLC. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the episode into its one iteration, episode one, episode two. But with that being said, my favorite Half Life iteration will probably have to be. Half-Life 2. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Be safe out there. Don't let the headcrafts get onto you and definitely don't let the combine catch you. Take care everyone and I thank you for joining me.